Hi, I'm Rinda. I'm Jim. We're Hardiness Approach. And we're back. We missed last week. We were not available anywhere. Nobody could call us. Nobody could email us. We were a bit out of touch. Nobody. But, but we're back. We're back. And we have, I got a present that I just have to tell you about because you'll really like it, you homesteaders. And I'm gonna have Jim hold it really close, but it's got little flowers across here. And this is what it says. Dirt tired, a condition that occurs after spending all day in the garden. Isn't that so cute? My sweet sister-in-law got that for me. <laughs> I love it. We're going to talk about mushrooms. I have never been a real mushroom person. He, on the other hand, loves mushrooms. And it wasn't until this week when I started doing some research that I found out how good they are for you. So we're going to talk about why they're good, how they need to be prepared in order to be good, and then we will show you us preparing them at some point. The ones that Jim is dusting off right now and wiping off with the cloth, which I found out is the way you are supposed to do mushrooms, you are not supposed to take the container and wash them off under the water because they soak up the water and that's not good for them. Ones that are more elaborate, like these kind of mushrooms, you take a fine brush and you brush them off. I didn't know that. So, we're the last ones to know. You all knew that, right? I, they probably did. They probably did. Keeping the secret from us. <laughs> but we know now. So today, I'm going to show you some that I believe these are. I'm going to show them to you very closely. Right there. And you're going to see the name right here but I'm not sure I'm saying them right because I know how to say shiitake mushrooms. Thankfully, I think I'm saying that right. But these are mitake, M-I-A-T-I-A-K-E, mitake. They are also called hen in the woods. And I thought that was great since we all love chickens. And they're all spread out. Now this one, I'm not sure it's completely different kind. It's not the same. So this one is different than these and these are the ones that I'm sure are the mataki ones. So let me tell you about why matakis are so good for you. Some of the reasons for eating mushrooms is they help a lot with your blood, with your blood pressure and what's the the, the blood the levels blood sugar blood sugar levels and they also have some anti-cancer properties. And antiviral and they have a really good immune boosting effect. There's also the kind of little spirally ones. I couldn't find any of those in the store. I had some at Thanksgiving. Our daughter-in-law brought some. They were wonderful. And they are called this, E-N-O-K-I. -E You've tried to pronounce it. Enoki. Enoki. Well, there you go, Mr. Smarty. <laughs> they have a significant anti-cancer um, ability to do. Then these... Maybe in the future we'll be able to talk about what that mechanism is, the, the anti-cancer mechanism. Oh, I, I'll be able to talk about it a little bit with this one. These are your shiitake mushrooms. And shiitake mushrooms... They encourage the blood tissues to take in the cholesterol, taking the cholesterol out of the bloodstream. And who knew this about mushrooms? I certainly didn't. There's another really fancy kind of mushroom called lion's mane, and it goes and has all bushy at the top. And one of the things that it does is stimulate nerve growth. So I had no idea. In fact, as I was doing reading, most people had no idea that these did all of this so are you is look at how dirty this is is that all we're, coming we're, off yeah, the mushrooms yeah we're dusting this the mushroom dust we're dusting the mushrooms they're actually it's kind of moist 
that's on them. So. This one is so beautiful. I just don't know what it is. One of the most important items that I learned is that these little um, cremini, is that the way you say them? The other name for them is mini bellas. And they don't have as much property for healing as these other exotic ones. But depending on who you read, they have a lot. And so that's why I was really frustrated. Some doctors would say how amazing they are, and some doctors would say, okay, they're not so amazing. But one thing that everyone agreed on is that they do have, I know, a little bit of toxicity in them that can cause cancer. What? You're telling me they're cancer ca not causing and then they are. Well, somebody did a bunch of research, obviously, on these because they needed to know. And the amount that you would have to eat in order for it to cause problems was astronomical and nobody eats that many mushrooms. However, it has been the opinion, and this was my most shocking thing, is that you should never eat mushrooms raw, meaning you shouldn't eat them on a salad bar because they have the toxins in them in small amounts. But if you cook them just a little bit, it di makes the toxins disappear. Wow, it dissipates the toxins. It and, dissipates and them. The components the nutrients of them, the nutrients are, are there. still there. And so today we're going to show you a really smart way to cook these. Now I'm going to tell you that the person, the doctor who said that they that you should never eat them raw, um, and that he doesn't even recommend these very much was Dr. Andrew Weil. Uh, several other doctors talk about all the incredible nutrients that they do have in them. Hmm. So, you know, we know that shiitakes have them really. Aren't these so cute? I mean, talk about your basic little toadstools. <laughs> so all of these, uh, and this one I bought a variety pack, and that's why I was able to get such a, a thing like this. But they are really good really really good so I want to share two books with you I've probably shared one of them before this is a book that I use quite a bit and we'll put a link down below through our Amazon that you can purchase it if you want to and it's the most the 150 healthiest foods it's written by a PhD this doctor also wrote one with Dr. Sinatra, who was a medical doctor. They're the ones who wrote The Great Cholesterol Myth. And he talks about all of the nutrients and the amazing things. So I just want to share with you how good he says these little cremini are. And if I am saying that wrong, I so apologize. I'm very new to mushrooms. He states that they're just super, super dense with vitamins, that they have high cancer fighting. Remember, so you need to cook them. High cancer fighting selenium is in them. They have 40% of the riboflavin that you need each day. In a serving? In a serving. And, and the serving is a certain uh, five ounce serving. Five ounces. And they have 35% of the copper that you need. Who knew that? Wow. They have 30% of the niacin that you need. They have 20 to 25% of the panothenic acid. See this. Okay. And phosphorus and zinc, plus 10% of manganese and thiamine. All. Which are hard to come by. In these. Wow. So they're incredible for you. One of the exciting things I believe that I have discovered is, you know, I used to cook with onions and I throw garlic in once in a while and okay, we'll throw a couple mushrooms in. I didn't realize that for every different variety of vegetable that you're throwing in there, you are throwing in more vitamins and minerals. You just don't think of onion as, in fact, I was teaching a nutrition class this week and I said something about the onion is a vegetable and they're like, Onion, onions are vegetables? <laughs> and we just don't think of them like that. We think That's of them as... That's probably the people who think chocolate are vegetables. But isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who are gardeners and raise onions, you know that they're heavy feeders. If you want them to give you a good return, you have to feed them really heavy. So when you think about that, it's my suspicion that typically the heavy feeders in your garden are the ones that are going to provide the greatest amount of nutrients. 
Really? Kind of makes sense, right? It does make sense. I mean, you put it in the ground, it comes out of the ground into what you want. So well, one of the things that they said is mushrooms f decay wood. They decay everything around oh, you. Yeah. And he says, then you want that in your body to yeah. eat up all the bad things. Yeah. I thought it was just a fascinating week to learn about these. I'm going to show you my other book. This was one of my textbooks for my class. Um, it's The World's Healthiest Foods by George, Jim, you say it. I'm really bad at it. Madelgen. Well, there you go. This huge, over 500, 600, what is it? Oh, no. 1,064 pages. This is an encyclopedia. It's only $39. For a textbook, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I believe you can still get it through Amazon. I'll put the link down below. If you can't th get it through Amazon, I'll put where you can get it through him. But it is fill. It it takes the really healthiest foods, and then it tells you how to prepare them, why they're good, and it gives you a recipe. And today we are going to follow the recipe for the right way to cook mushrooms. His right way. Now. He does not use olive oil or fats to cook in. He uses broth. And so we are going to be cooking these in a broth. We've, we've started using broth from time to time. And it's impressive. I mean, it does a great job. And you, you don't have the greasiness. And if you're concerned about the smoke level, getting it too hot, uh, you're, you're not damaging your oil that's in there and then putting that into your food you're well, actually just so, doing the broth so many other ways to get your good fats yeah you yeah. don't have to cook with them and then it, it's called sauteing but it's sauteing with yeah broth so and so we're going to be sauteing these and um then we're going to put a mediterranean dressing over the top of them mm. so that is what your treat is I guess I just need to learn to be a mushroom person because the amount of nutrients they have in it are amazing. The antiviral, the anti-cancer, all the, I mean, they have so many different cancer causing, cancer, cancer stopping things in them. In fact, one in one of these books where I was reading, it literally says that the mushrooms, the studies that they've been doing have are causing a 60% decrease in breast cancer meaning you have a 60 percent chance less chance of getting breast cancer if you're adding mushrooms to your diet huge you wouldn't well, know if you were going to get it or not five times a week i don't just, know uh, some quantity yeah so i know we've been adding them a lot more okay. you can add them into your eggs you can add them into casseroles you can add them into anything mm. and so and the way it sounds if you're cooking them you're eliminating the toxicity toxicity problems but you pro the quantity you'd probably have to eat is unreasonable to even think of doing so if you were there, there's there seems to be no downsides yeah so yeah which is unusual right yeah and if you go google should you eat um raw you're going to get both sides and a lot of people go well let's just go on the safe side and cook them so that's what we're going to start doing i never cared for the raw ones anyway so I'm excited. And remember, there's a scene in the book, the movie, Julie and Julia. On Julia Child and the girl who's doing all of the cooking and cooking her way through Julia Child's book. The key for them was to leave enough room in your pan that they're all laying singly. And that sautés them really well. Ah, okay. Rather than cooking them all. Makes sense. Our grandbabies are almost six months old. Next, on our anniversary, actually, and, on Groundhog's and Day. And tomorrow, we get to take care of them. Yes, we do, for yeah. a lot of hours. Our parents we'll needed to do some shopping, and... They're going to Twin Falls. They entrust us enough <laughs> to take care of them. This is so cool. We're going to have fun with them. But at six months, unlike those of us who are my age, we fed our babies early. They don't feed babies f solid food anymore until they reach six months. I'm assuming that one of the things they start out with is still rice. I discovered something amazing. We are going to start this process, do it all through the week, film it for you, and next Monday you'll see the end of the process. But we are making sprouted rice. Sprouted rice. Amazing. Sprouted brown rice. 
And the what we do is we go through the sprouting process, which we'll tell you all about it. And when it's all done and there's little tiny sprouts there, then we put it in a dehydrator. And when it's completely dry, then we put it through the grinder. And once it's ground, then it's a rice flour. And that way she can make rice cereal for her babies. What is the advantage of sprouting? It is sweeter rice, and if you don't put it through the grinder, it's um, not as chewy as, as mm. the other. So we're making like a rice flour, which will make a, put, a cereal for the babies. And I'm excited to try this. So this is what you do. You start with a half a cup of brown rice and put it into your quart now, jar. Have you had to rinse that off first? Isn't okay. he good to remember that? I'm going to go rinse this off. Kind of put yourself in a rough spot there. The verdict is also out as to whether you should rinse it or not because you're trying to rinse out the strychnine that is in rice. But they also say if you rinse it, you can rinse out some of the nutrients. Take your pick. So. <laughs> I'll go for losing a little bit of nutrients to get rid of any strychnine that's there. All right. So we're going to put how much of this in? Pour it up to the top. Good enough? Mm -hmm. Now, I've got my screen here, and I'm putting that on the top, and I'm putting my lid on. I'm going to let it soak in here for 12 hours and then I'm going to dump the water out, turn it upside down so that it's sitting in this bowl and let it start doing its thing. This video will be continued next week. For this recipe you take five tablespoons of chicken broth. I'm using an organic free-range chicken broth that I got today at one of the local stores here. So I put five tablespoons into my pan. When this starts to steam, I'm going to add my mushrooms. Okay, I have steam coming off of this now. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Now I said a few minutes ago to lay them all single there. We're not doing that with this particular bat thing. This takes one pound of mushrooms, five tablespoons of the broth. And I've got it on a medium heat. And so first thing I'm gonna do is cover it tightly and let it cook for three minutes. While that is cooking, Jim is going to make the Mediterranean dressing that these get dumped into afterwards. We have started with our salt. We have some salt in here. We're going to add some pepper. Somebody's sending us a bunch of text messages right now. <laughs> olive oil. How much is this? Three tablespoons, Three of, tablespoons olive of olive oil. Olive oil. Looks like a two tablespoons. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Of that's actually lime juice. Lime juice. Can be lemon juice. And it looks like some a garlic. Cl garlic. Cl a clove, a medium clove of garlic. Okay. <laughs> He's just gonna whisk this together. And that is what we are putting the mushrooms in when we are all done. Okay. That looks good. Now, I, after three minutes, I remove the lid. Look at that. And it says to be careful with these, this type of... Um, if you're using white button, then it has more moisture, but this doesn't have as much moisture. So now we go for four minutes longer, and you want to kind of stir it and watch it and so that they turn golden brown, but they don't burn. Because that's the difference when you are cooking with a, a broth instead of an oil. 
is that we found that you really have to watch it so that it doesn't burn. The goal is to evaporate your broth. I'm going to turn it because my hand doesn't really do it all even. Trade and let him pick up the heavy pan. Oh, you wait, wait. Oh, you can have me do it. Okay. There you go. You want a bite? Let's try it. You're the mushroom person. Wow. Can I, should I taste it? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. It's got all of those good flavors and the body of the mushroom is so nice. Okay, that well is done. really, really, really good. <laughs> you could use this as a side dish. You could put it in beans. You could put it over po baked potato. You could put it over some boiled potatoes with butter and just put this over it. Oh my word, you could put it on top of vegetables. You could do anything with this. Just put it on top of a hamburger. Let your imagination run wild. Run it, put it over a salmon when you're cooking it. Oh my, this is really good. Success, guys, this is a success. We recently made a phone call and talked to our, our friend Austin. Okay, so actually all the beep, beep, beeps you heard on this thing earlier were him sending us pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, we, got to, we haven't talked to him for a while. I mean, he's been really busy. For New those baby. of you who don't know, Austin is the one and his wife and his family who purchased our home in Missouri. So he's been busy. Um, you know, we, we were close to them, uh, so it's fantastic. Anyway. We chatted with him quite a while. He had a lot to tell us, but he hadn't been sending us pictures of what's going on. And so the beeps you heard were, what, about 10 pictures? <laughs> just, just. I think there's some more coming because I don't think we got what we really want to tell you about. Yeah, we got a, we got a whole <laughs> album of pictures. So remember we had 15 acres there and there was one area where it was like 12 acres so that it was all pasture and meadow. meadow. Yeah. They had goats to begin with. They have traded their goats in. On. I haven't got the story as oh to why word. the goats were a challenge. How come they got the cow I wanted? Yeah. You guys, they got the cow I've always wanted. <sighs> a brown Swiss. A brown Swiss. Oh, and she came with a baby and she's pregnant again. So plus, plus they have they have a second calf that they're feeding with her. her. So and, it's, and they have know. a couple of cows on the property from a neighbor. Yep. So they have a real cow that's cows that's eating the hay, the grass, so that it yeah. doesn't get all overgrown. And that's so awesome. That's so exciting for them. He's still working on the house, which is so much better than it was when we moved out. Um, the paneling is all gone, and and it's white walls. There's brand new windows in the living rooms. Um, he's got the stairway almost completed that goes to the attic and he's just got to mud the attic and then his kids can get three out of the bedroom in the back and up, up, you know, have just the boys in the back room. And they had a new baby. Yep. So 
anyway, we it was just delightful to hear from them and see that they are really making our farm, their farm, into a farm. Yeah, yeah, it's gratifying. It's really, really fun. So we um, just have had a really great weekend and weekday and we will have more on the rice sprouting next week. We've been moving right along with yeah, it. Yeah, we're getting there. So thanks so much for joining us on our journey and please eat right, grow food, even if it's just in a windowsill. Bye.